10. 3, 2, 1, action. We're here shooting Nightmare on Elm Street again uh, <laughs> with, uh, with an iPhone. You know, growing up and watching these Nightmare on Elm Street movies and thinking that one day I would be with Roy Wagner is just <laughs> amazing. We had this crazy idea that we would recreate something I did in 1986. You might wonder what I'm in this crazy, decrepit old hallway. Well, it will be once we get it finished. Uh, but we're in this hallway because this is one of the sets that we shot Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Warriors in. And uh, we're going to recreate a scene, but we're not shooting on film nor are we going to be shooting at it with the top-end cameras or any of the normal standard digital cameras. How do you feel like being back to reshoot the scene from Nightmare on Elm Street 3? Brings back some nightmares. <laughs> I was the gaffer on the first Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and now we're recreating those scenes from over 20 years ago using LED lights and a uh, iPhone as the camera. The technology has changed. It can be really difficult uh, to bring a, your company uh, or your department up to speed uh, overnight. But uh, these are a good group here. And uh, we're going to try to scare uh, all the little kitties. Do what's called a popcorn thrower. You know, when something happens, they throw their popcorn. I don't recall what we did up there. Uh, we did something that uh, edged that door. And then uh, this light that comes down on her, which was stupidly too light. I, such a dumbass I was. Uh, just bring it right over into here. This one? Yeah, and sharp top it. Okay, so we'll pan that. This comes this way? Yeah, just move it over, over to here. Enough space because the smoke machine has to be right here, going that way. Backlight has to go back here, going that way. Fire gag is going to be built right in here. It's easier to light the first time. It's not as easy to light the second time. Because you've got to try to make it look exactly the same. So last night, I watched the first half of the movie, and now I'm seeing it, what's happening now like what, what is that like for you to just see it all be i guess it's easier but it's also there's so many other different challenges it's easier but you know i'm trying to exactly replicate where their shadow falls yeah. uh where the, exactly the light hit the wall and so it's not like doing it for the first time mm -hmm. because i can be completely wrong and i'm right because yeah. it's the first time but this time i have to exactly duplicate what what we did before Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we need to get rid of that, all this, this stuff here. We're, we're, we're rebuilding that, right? As soon as we rebuild the, this, I think we're pretty close. I have more control when I take it further away from the light. Don't tell anybody, I'm actually touching all the equipment myself because she's uh, t so tall. When, keep going back and you walk when I started as a director of photography, uh, we didn't have stand-ins. We were lucky enough to have the actors. And so I got to where I would put my hand up so I could see the key, you could see the, the, the shadows, the fill side, and any kind of edge light or top light that I had. Here we go, this is the day that we're, we're shooting, recreating what I did in 1986. 
This is our shoot, one and only shoot day, where we're going to recreate the scene that took us about a week to shoot in 1986. All right, atmosphere is looking good, guys. Here we go, everyone to our first positions. Set. And, action. Alright, let's go back to one real quick. The focus did something weird. Son of a. Resetting. Action. Closer to camera. Using the uh, iPhone uh, as a camera is rather interesting for someone that's used to carrying 100 pound cameras all day long. It makes you like more at one with the camera. And the uh, device that uh, we're mounting it with is, uh, is quite nice. It's really easy to use. I, we need to pull a, a a double out of this light right here. Could someone tell me who took the toilet seat because <laughs> there's a toilet seat there. Where's that? Guy? I'm joking. Yeah. I have some Lucas. someone step in. Yep, coming in. Lucas, still slow motion? Or are we going oh back yeah. Back? It is definitely slow motion. So we gotta bring the angle down. Well, keep in mind that right here. Yeah. A lot of times, if, if you take a look down here, uh, look down the hallway, I, I don't have to light her at all because I've lit the wall behind her. And so instead of uh, having all these different things to, to light her, all I have to do is emulate what we had before and uh, uh, you'll, you'll see her all the time because she's got that wall lighting her, separating her. Rolling. Speeding. Don't cover my, my name. Mark it. Four apple take two, Mark. <laughs> it's moving already, so it doesn't have to adjust to her. It's already moving and framing in for her, so you're anticipating her. Mm -hmm. I was so smart then. Yeah. Let's do it again. Right, you want me to do it this way? I was a genius back then. <laughs> Action. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Back one. Let's help her up. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> Three, two, one, action. Go. So that way I see oh, the shoulder. The camera's that way, yeah. I mean, you can, you can fall back here, but then show me the sweater. Three, action. two, Deep. one. Keep go. Four color grade. Yeah. This is the first time I've ever used Resolve for, uh, obviously for an Apple product. I've used uh, DaVinci for Blackmagic uh, cameras and for other uh, cameras. Obviously when you're using uh, a phone as a camera, there are certain anomalies that are present that normally are not a problem just for a phone user but when you're doing high contrast production work, uh, they become much more interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this color times out. So this is the boiler room that we see in that scene um, where Freddy takes all of his victims. And we have to kind of study the original film to get an idea of what the textures that they use, what materials the original crew used and kind of try to adapt it to what we have available now. This is so similar to Nightmare because uh, we were shooting sound and uh, yet 
all the time there was construction going on. Uh, we never finished construction on that film all the way through the film because you could hear saws going off and hammers and all that. And you'd have to have everything quiet. It was the loudest set I've ever been on in my, my life. Um, and so it's funny, I've, I'm uh, hearing all that going on here and I'm just bringing back memories of how crazy it was. Fire, action. <laughs> action. 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 <laughs> <laughs> if I just have a one light pointing back down into the sludge, it'll be a pinpoint of light and the rest will go black. Backing. All right, folks, here it goes. Action. Up higher, up higher knees up, and then just keep getting out. Keep getting out. Good. Yeah. Folks. Left hand and right hand, let's give ourselves a big round of applause. Amazing job, everybody. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much. That's a wrap. Great job. Thank you. Fantastic. Tonight, we went to what might be considered absurd. Here's the problem. This new camera is meant for consumers. But anybody that knows my work knows that I'm a dynamic exposure cinematographer. I shoot with strong highlights and very dark shadows. And it really turned out incredibly well, much, much better than I thought it was going to turn out. The great adventure for me, and I hope for you, is that you will join me on YouTube to watch not only my conversations with other filmmakers, but watch my journeys and my playtime with new technologies, new tools, old tools, and trying to find new ways of using them. 
So please join me on YouTube for Beyond the Darkness. And uh, I suspect Scarlett will be here for most of it. Thank you very much.